Good evening guys. Day four lockdown and here we are. Just saying to my neighbor and something I've been thinking about, it takes seven days to get into a routine. And um and it's uh you know, we're halfway there. We're just over halfway there to get ourselves into a routine, into getting used to this um uh environment. And I was uh I was on uh, on Twitter as I am usually, you know, chatting um, to comic book people and stuff like that. And across uh, my um, feed came a person's um, tweet about, hey guys, I'm really, I've got really severe OCD. I'm really freaking out. I, uh, my anxiety is right up there. And, um, you know, this is really just full on for me. Uh, I need help. What do I do? What do I do? So my answer was sleep. And, and I am honestly say that from the bottom of my heart, sleep is a good way to put off something like anxiety and stuff. And if you have severe OCD or if you, uh, you know, um, have some sort of, you know, mental health issues, and I'm one of them, right? I sub sometimes it's depression will get onto me and I'll quickly go move over and do something else. Or if you have an attack, the best thing to do is just pull the, jump into bed, Put on some music, get the uh, get the blankets over your head, and fall asleep. Uh, do anything to. That's my answer in that sense. A simple answer is just go to sleep. Oh, the other one is jump in a bath. If you have a bath, fall and get into your bath. Put some bubble bubble on. Just put up some candles. You know, I know it's not very you know macho, but put some you know uh, some scents in there and stuff. Just something to take you out of the environment that you're in. And I find that if you have a bathtub, I don't, I'll just jump in the shower and have it, just stay in the shower for about 15 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever, as long as I feel, okay, I'm calm now. Get all my thoughts out. Uh, there was one time I was having really bad, bad um, negative thoughts, like really bad negative thoughts when I first moved into here. My anxiety was really bad. So what I would do, I would like um, put the music on. Um, I always have music on when I'm in a shower or a bath. Whatever music I'm into at the time, hip hop, uh, Drake, dance, whatever, uh, metal, you know, whatever I'm into right there. Uh, before I was just listening to some Tool, uh, the new album. So it's basically just to let the water wash over you and just a sense of like, hey, I can let this, um, let this, um, you know, this little moment in time just wash away. And which brings me to, um, reminded me of when we were at film school, um, water, my tutor at the time, amazing tutor, uh, uh, she has a doctorate in many things, and she was an amazing, hey young homie, awesome brother, welcome to the show, uh, thank you for joining me, yeah, so, so we're, um, yeah, so water and film, and you know uh, whatever thing is a, a medium is used as a uh, as a way to just wash away things so if you're feeling anxious if you're feeling and I'm, I'm responding to a tweet that was on uh, on tweet on Twitter about how a person was having really severe OCD and I know a lot of my friends have it all right uh, not a lot but many of them have it and they suffer from like anxiety attacks and imagine that in this situation here, it gets alleviated severely more than normal because you're closed off to all your friends physically. One of the things that, you know, people say is get out of your environment when you're having these things. Go meet somebody, have a coffee. And I always, always say that. So if you're feeling depressed or suicidal, get someone, call someone up and sit down with them. Now you can, now it's really harder to physically do that. So the best way to do that is to get on social media and talk to people and ring them up, you know, face to face, go, hey, how are you doing? You know, so you can get through. <laughs> Please leave a number and I'll be there for you. That's from, um, that's from a hip hop, uh, a tribe called Quest. So I have a really diverse music love, musical love. Uh, so that reminded me way back in the 80s, late 80s, you know, a tribe called Quest, good band, right? Listen to them. It's really cool. So, uh, so yeah, so 
deal you know water is always used as a form of cleansing washing away your past your moment so if you're feeling yeah bro yeah yeah this thing's getting out of hand you're right um young homie saying what's up laugh out loud hope you're staying safe out there here Our, um this is um this thing's getting out of control out of hand yeah it is but um in a sense we if we safeguard ourselves and our family members and keep them in our homes and within our yards and only go for essential things and i really mean that only go for essential things food and medication you'll be okay stay two meters or even three meters away make sure you go to face covered remember protect yourself you know protect your neck and you'll be okay uh, yeah you're right brother you stay connected yeah and that's the thing so i mean if i you know if i feel a bit anxious like i said i twitter to this person who has very severe ocd just go to sleep when you wake up you feel refreshed and you might even have good dreams and and you know do something that will calm you down uh anything that you've ever learned on how to keep you calm keep you calm and positive you do that so you go to sleep or you have a long shower have a long bath anything to relax you will help you okay so yeah day four right um as i said earlier on it takes seven days to get into a routine and i say that from the bottom of my heart because i have done that myself when i moved in like I, i've been living with people for, for my entire life and then two years ago i moved into my apartment and the first thing i felt was loneliness straight away you wouldn't believe it i'd been living with a young couple uh sorry a, a, a young mom with two kids right so there was noise in the house all the time i was always connected and suddenly there was no noise in my, in my home in my apartment so i felt really anxious i felt loneliness depressed and my sister came said to, i said to come over come over come over she said no 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 you're gonna have to learn to deal with this and so i i got online and i watched a lot of ted talk stuff and a lot of things to figure out how to deal with this and i've mentioned this before but this is really important now because hey we're here unconnected from people physically uh, i can talk to my neighbor but i still have to stay away from him right because i want to make sure that he doesn't he's not a carrier i'm not a carrier and we don't interact and we stay away from each other physically but not socially right so the whole word of social distancing is very weird because social we always think about social media and so i think physical distancing is the right word to use because that's what's happening we're physically distancing ourselves from each other so she said to me you know you need to do that and i got on her talk i looked at how to deal with depression how to deal with neurological uh, ways my mind works uh, how my mind can lie to me and if you're an artist you're very anxious about sharing your work right that's the first thing you're kind of afraid that somebody will go oh that sucks and then you'll have a negative feeling and then your brain will tell you negative things about what you're doing so I got online and listened to a whole bunch of short talk, TED talks, like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, right? Um, people, experts in the field, right? Hey, Regan. Cheers, brother. We're going to be talking about some comics later on. I'm just dealing with this one at the moment. Thank you for joining me. Hey, I watched your Instagram video. Hey, uh, I need to ask you, when you do your leads, why do you take your hands away afterwards? Is that to wipe your fingers off? Oh, um, you know, because I play guitar and bass myself, but... Uh, you know i kind of always held on to it just move up and down the fretboard but um up and down the neck i should say why do you take your fingers off uh not yet bro not yet um uh, thanks for mentioning it hey guys uh young homie saying that if uh have i watched the documentary emotion uh e um uh, is that space or something Emo motion you'll see it on the on the things cheers bro and hey love your music i need to spend some more time listening to it uh thank you for sharing it with me uh regan uh regan is regan's one of my oldest 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 friends in new zealand like seriously like from the moment there was another person but he moved away but from the moment i came i stepped into new zealand i guess into coming into my home in morua uh, living on lady street I love that home we had. I just miss not being in that home. I think when I moved away from the home, I felt really weird and uh, just uh, disjointed from my friends. Of course, we made more friends and that was cool. But I think 
Reagan was really someone who very strongly gave me a love for comics. And I will always say that. I always appreciate who had an impact in my life. And I think that's what we need to do. And I think you guys, sometimes I say that and I, and I, you know, and I um, mention people, sometimes people feel a bit weird being mentioned about how much impact they've had in my life. Because one, of the, one thing we're going to realize that we, we are who we are because of the negatives and positives that people have had in, from, in our impacts they've had in our lives. And, um, and I mentioned that, you know, when I opened my comic shop and, um, and I was asked, um, you know, I was interviewed for the, uh, for, um, yeah, bro. Thank you. Uh, Regan saying, very, very cool memories, man. Was a privilege. Man, privilege was mine, brother. I mean, look at where I am now. If you weren't in part of my life, bro, I don't think I would have the much as much love for comics as I do now. And I might not even be in comics in the industry that I'm in now, even as an independent creator. Uh, so, you know, it's important to appreciate the people that come in our lives and pass on. And there are so many amazing friends I've made over the years. I'm 47 now, right? I was about eight years old when I met Regan. We, we um, you know, we used to call ourselves the ABC Warriors. We used to have our own little hut. How dumb is that now that in New Zealand you need a permit, a building permit to build a hut, right? To build our little house, tree house. I think that is the worst thing that's happened to us as uh, giving away that freedom in New Zealand. And I mentioned that two years ago when I was on, um, probably, yeah, about two years ago when I was on, on the radio, that how I did not like um, how that was happening in New Zealand. And I still hold that, um, that, that viewpoint, it's, you know. But, you know, when we could go out and, uh, and build a hut with sticks and stuff, hang out, play cowboys and Indians. Yeah, bro, it is so dumb, you know, and, and hang out with our friends. And not really get into much trouble, but just hang out socially about trouble. But I was a troubled teen when I was a young, I mean, t troubled young person, child when I was young. Because of things happened, right? Uh, and so, but I really appreciate what everybody has helped me become through all the stuff that have, um, impacts they've had in my life. I've had old people have an amazing impact in my life. 70 year olds, 60 year olds, uh, you know, just really imparted to me um, uh, through mentorship. To, be, to give me leadership skills that I use now, right? As a, as a, as a leader uh, in what we do uh, in the company, building up uh, plunge in, uh, enterprises, uh, building, uh, putting together the studio with Seven, with Jason, with um, with Ayla, you know, uh, working on you know working on stuff like this, right? Working on um, the Sunspot magazine. Ayla is an amazing journalist. She really, she, you know, I just. Um, I, uh, over the last two years, I met some amazing people in our uh, in our uh, pop culture fan base, and I was I, I would just go to Ayla and say, "Look, I'm putting together this magazine. I want to make this happen. You know, I'd love for you to work with me." And we actually met through another friend, Mike Berter, who's a writer, who's an amazing writer, sci-fi, crime writer, and a journalist. You know, and and through one friendship, I was able to make. And he's a comedian as well, and an, um, like he does. Um, at one one six, they have a uh, oh, what is it called? It'll come to me later. But yeah, Mike Butter. I'm gonna. I was supposed to interview him the last couple of weeks, but he got busy uh, last week, I think, or the week before. Sorry, no, it was last week before the lockdown. Yeah, I was supposed to. He was supposed to come over, and we we're supposed to interview him about the uh, about Crime Church and his books. So hopefully. You know, I might be able to get him through Messenger, and we'll have an interview like that way. I'll try to set it up this week. Right. So, you know, so I really appreciate. And so when, so yeah, with, you know, we've got this magazine finished, guys. We have, we have Sunspot magazine finished. There's going to be some touch-ups I'm going to have to do with here. Uh, some people said you put adult in there, so you people are expecting uh, erotic images. Uh, and uh, nudity, full-on sexual things. So I said, no, that's not what that's about. That's actually, yeah. And then they said, well, maybe you should change it to mature readers. And I said, yeah, that sounds good. So we're going to redo that and um, and put it back up on Indiegogo. And guys, I really want your help on this. Show show people around the world that you actually support what we're doing. And it's not just about me or my company. 
there are some amazing people that are interviewed in this, right? Uh, we've had articles about a you know a local person. I uh, can't remember her name, but uh, a local person who phot photographs um, cosplayers, right? Um, and I'll put her Instagram on to just show you what she's up, capable of. Uh, and also um, Wayne's uh, Wayne's uh, workshop, you know. Uh, I can't remember Wayne's last name. I, I have a problem with people's names. If I have, if I don't meet them constantly every month, I forget people's names. That's my head injuries. I've had about six or seven uh, since I was a child. Since about maybe seven years old, I've had about six or seven head injuries. So I have a problem with remembering people's names. I'll just talk to them and then I'll say, um, sorry, I've forgotten your name. Even though they're close friends of mine, right? Or acquaintances, and you know. I apologize, but please, you know, I've had injuries, please remind me. Uh, and that's why I'm always walking around with Jason, because Jason always reminds me what I'm doing. And that's the other thing. Putting together Plunge has been an amazing privilege. That's something we wanted to do, way, something I wanted to do way back in 2015, five years ago. You know, we were able to do it last year, and we're looking to do it again this year, and we will do it this year, once this is all over. And so... Uh, you know, working with Seven to do the artwork. I mean, you know, uh, Guillaume, Guillaume colored this for me, right? This was a black, um, black and white illustration. That's twelve, um, eight, nine years old. It was just sitting there, all right? It was just sitting there on my computer. I paid for it. That's, thanks, Wayne. Uh, sorry, uh, homie, uh, young homie. That's uh, Wayne Carroll, guys. Check out his Wayne's workshop on, uh, on Facebook, his group page there. Uh, and so, you know, talking about that, the cosplayer. So I was going to actually, um, I'm painting a, a costume for Lynette, who is a cosplayer, local cosplayer, who, you know, who's going to be, was, um, is going to be cosplaying our character uh, on the wall. Sorry, I should, didn't grab it in time. Um, who's going to be cosplaying in Creator Girl, right? And so... It's, an, it's, it's, it's really cool to just bring it all together. But I mean, Wood Plunge, Plunge Enterprises, there's three things there, right? There is the comics that we put out with, um, you know, as you know, with, um, with uh, Seven, with his um, Red Dot that we co-created, with Incredicle, as I mentioned. Uh, of course, Templeton. This is the character Templeton here. Whoops. Right? And this is uh, Pacinta. Um, and the book's called Temple Templeton. The reason it's called Templeton because I had an interaction with th this artist, Ben Templesmith. Sorry, you can't, it's backwards, but I called him Templeton after Ben Templeton, an Australian writer. I love this work. It's, I mean, check out the work there. All right, let me just pull it out. I usually don't like to pull out my comics out of the bags unless I really have to, but I thought I'd mention this. Right, because I really loved his art style and I really enjoyed um, Ben's work. And um, I'll come back to your um, your post, the young homie, in a minute. So this is Ben Templeton's art style, right? So, but the other thing, the reason, and I've got the whole set because you know, there's about six of them. And as an artist, I, as a writer, hey, bro, Gray, how's it, brother? As a as a writer. I always write as a movie, so a, a, a standard movie is like an hour and a half. So, uh, um, so for me, when I'm writing, I, I write six issues. I break it down into twenty-two uh, pages or twenty-five, twenty, whatever. But it's always six issues. So I don't think in my head, hmm, this will just make a one shot. And I usually, if I do that, I just go, okay, this is where it's going to go. But when I'm writing a, a, a story. It's always a movie in my head, and um, and so because I'm trained as a as a filmmaker, right? I spent three years doing that, and as you know, guys, I spent almost six years as a stage director, um, and and as an actor on stage. So I know the ins and outs of productions and stuff, and so I I um, you know like I said, I write a big story, and and over the last. Whew, 20 years, right? Um, I've written so many stories, so now I'm going to spend the next 10 years 
um, and I'll be 57 by that time, 10 years. And that's a weird thing. I don't feel 47 in my head. And I know everybody feels the same way. And, uh, well, I'm not sure everybody feels the same way, but you're outside. I noticed that I've got more gray hairs now in the last week or so. I think that's because of the worry and anxiety and all that shit that we deal with right now of being locked up in our homes. I'm getting more gray hairs. And I reckon that in, by the time we come out of this, I might actually have a full gray beard, which I'm excited about. And I, and I love, my dad's got gray hair, white hair, full on. And I'm excited about just getting full white hair. And I want to see what it looks like on my face. I mean, I'm already bald, right? So what, what you know, I'm excited about being mature in my body. But my body's been broken for about, since the car accident and the head uh, and the assault on my neck. And well, assault on the uh, head on the neck and assault on my body. Uh, and so back in 2006 and 2007 was a car accident. So, um, yeah, so I always think about a big picture when it, you know, a complete movie. So I now turn that all those film scripts are written, and there's several of them. Now I turn that into a comic book. And, and um, one of the great things about writing comic books. I don't like to give a lot of descriptions to my artist. I uh, I let them ask questions. I let I give them as little description as I can, and I want them to be free with it because as an as a as an artist myself, I know that as I'm doing it, I change things, and sometimes I change with the mistakes I make. I will allow the mistakes to uh, to do that run their course, and then if I don't like it, I'll pull back a little bit. And I think a lot of times we worry about mistakes as artists and writers. Yeah. Me, uh, Grace saying, me too with the gray hair, bro. Yeah, bro. I mean, having gray hair is, is, a, is awesome because I think people think that just because you have gray hair, you're decrepit in your mind. And I think a lot of, uh, a lot of times we don't appreciate our, um, our komatuas and all the experiences they have in their lives, our elders, and our parents even, right? It took me years to get to understand that my dad is a wise man. He might blurt out some stuff that I'm not happy with or don't understand, but he's a wise man. So, yeah, so writing, um, turning 20 years of comic books, uh, sorry, comic short stories and no novellas and movie scripts into uh, comic books. So I have, after all that, I don't have any need to write anymore but i still will come up with ideas and and you just jot them down uh, like i mentioned when i did a post a couple of days ago about um you know about the survive the city that happened in a dream in 2018 maybe about i think january february i just you know i was dreaming this whole thing about this kid got in a nobody around and there's just he's looking for food he they've 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 um, gathered food all together and, um, you know, and he's going from house to house going, we need to find food, right? And it's not a zombie movie, by the way. It's not a zombie comic book, right? I, I actually have a zombie uh, comic book on the way, uh, which was, which was, being, written as a, was written, being written as a movie called Well Bay, which Rika reminded me of because he had been following me for years on Facebook. And, uh, and he said, where is Well Bay? I said, yeah, yeah, it's there, bro. It's there, bro. And, of course, if you're from Northland and from Array, you know how beautiful Whale Bay is. And I don't like to tell people that a lot because I don't want that the serenity and the beauty of Whale Bay to be trashed. And sometimes people do trash it, leaving bottles and stuff and rubbish there. But Whale Bay is an amazing little paradise we have in Northland. There are so many little paradises, but Whale Bay is such a paradise. I, I first went to Whale Bay and... This is talking about why I wrote the well, um, why base Whale Bay, my Whale Bay story in Whale Bay and called it Whale Bay. is because when I was uh, at, I think I was at um, chef school. I was doing my um, hospitality and tourism course, my second bar. And uh, you get like a second and third bars and like... Um, it shows that the bars are what, um, you know, it's basically like getting a medal or so, tells, or certificate, tells, or diplomas or whatever, tells you how good or what, you, what your knowledge about food is. And if you guys don't know me, 
I have um, I have diplomas in um, business. I have diplomas in um, in theology, uh, biblical theology. Um, I have diplomas in, like I said, chef school. Uh, yeah, brother. Thanks, brother. Night, Dre. Uh, let me just quickly do this. Um, read this. Um, right. So, young homie, let me get to this before I carry on with my thing. Uh, young homie says emotion is e space, but um, not space spell, but you know parentheses or whatever. I don't know. I have issues with uh, grammar and shit. Sorry, guys. Emotion is an um, awesome documentary, bro. You should check it out. It's about the energies and vibration of the positive and negative effects on one's life. Almost like The Secret, but on another scale. It's cool. Like, he's on, uh, he was mentioning, uh, commenting on that before. I was talking about how to deal with your um, anxiety he takes right now. Uh, because somebody tweeted on a line and how I think. So if you, later on, you can re-watch this from the start. There's, um, I always do these in like five to ten minute segments. So that you can watch little bits of it. Because I, then I can cut it up and put it on YouTube. Okay. So, yeah. Check out the documentary, E-Motion. Okay. So, I, you know, so I also spent six years doing um, stage productions and stuff from the ground up, from being a producer, from productions, from doing stage sets. And one of my good friends, Kevin, who I've known for about whew, 26 years, who's a still a good friend of mine. I still see him every week. All right. I haven't seen him this week because, of course, lockdown. Um, and, you know, from art school. So I have diplomas from art as well. So I design. This is why everything sort of, all the stuff now I put into this one thing, comic books and comic book uh, uh, productions. And the other thing when you uh, when I talk about the convention, I actually learned that at church when I was doing my, uh, when I was at um, in, in, uh, in religion, you know doing religious studies, I learned how to put on a production, like uh, sorry not a production, a convention from that experience twenty odd years ago. Yeah, about twenty six. I think I was 26, 27 at the time. So all those experiences come into this. Uh, I did several business courses and so on. And also, you know, as you know, I ran a comic store for about 50, uh, 15 odd months. So, and so I have that. And I worked in a factory. So I, I have the experience of how to how factories work as well. And also, excuse me, and how also um, businesses work, right? Um, and how to be a good customer service person because I worked around almost about 15 years at customer services that's why I get really tired of um, and annoyed at comics pros when they think you know that customer service is a bad thing they don't really understand what customer service means it's where someone comes to you and goes hey I'd like to spend some money show me what did you know what is good and then and these guys are going you're you're a piece of crap and that's why they the industry is dying the mainstream but the independent industry, comic producers are, you know, raising their own funds through Kickstarter, for Indiegogo and other, uh, go, give a little, GoFundMe and all that stuff. They're doing their own thing. And also by doing the uh, YouTube live streams and super chats and stuff, which is where I want to get to, right? I don't want to be able to just um, do this and try to scrounge around for money, but actually get to a point where, you know, I'm working at this and people appreciate my work at this. Uh, so, yeah. So, you know, so all this, I'm learning all the time. I, I never want to step, stop learning. You know, uh, I've spent years learning and I still will learn. I'll still ask questions about what I, want, what I need to know. Uh, and that's what's going to keep all of us, um, you know, young. The moment you stop learning is the moment you stop um, mentally becoming decrepit. But the um, you know and um, and you get less engaged in things and less uh, connected, right? So if you keep learning, and the cool thing is that our digital environment now is the best thing in the world to for all of us to be able to learn. Google, what's this? Okay, now I'm going to step, step, spend time finding out about this. So okay, so I mentioned so the ten grand. Is the uh, is a comic by J. Marko Sudinsky, one of my favorite writers of all time, a great inspiration to me, and a mentor. I, I call him as a de facto mentor. Like he's, I've never met him, 
But uh, in 2000, um, 2001, when I got married, uh, we had a real, we were really dealing with the real hardships. Uh, and, um, and I was working for the Sally Army at that time as an as assistant youth pastor. Be doing 20 hours a week. And, uh, you know, and helping there and then also doing, looking after young kids, 12, uh, 12 year olds and stuff, um, 12 to 13 year olds, 15 year olds. And then would you look after the older kids, like uh, 15 older ones, like, you know, being youth leadership, um, you know, um, kids at risk, whatever, you know, um, and just looking after them every Friday, every week, every other Wednesday would be teaching them, whatever. And I learned how to do editing there, you know, and then I went into film school from there. But it was really, really having a hard time uh, connecting with things. And also, my, uh, I had left my other group, uh, other social connections, and had to move to a new environment with a new group, right? And so I had to, you know, learn how to make friends there. But one of the things was I got introduced um, from, with the, some friends into Babylon 5. So if you've never seen Babylon 5, I, I would recommend watching Babylon 5. It's a five-season TV series with about six movies. And also there was one that was later made on. So J. J. Michael Sajinsky pitched the idea for it about a... Uh, give me one second. Hopefully I don't break it. Please don't break the reason I break it. So, uh, all right. So J. Michael Sajinsky, uh, this is a uh, Star Fury, one of the ships that are uh, oh, that's in um, this is the main captain's uh, year two um, star fury and it's, oh, it's, it's got a tiger there and everything this is the one i wanted on this one that came with two different things hey rico do you want to come on messenger if you call me on messenger we can chat that way we can um, you know um have you on video i've got the laptop uh the pc laptop up running if you want to do that It'd be cool to have you on and chatting, brother. Um, so yeah, so Safiru. So you know, so I was I was really having a really bad time, and so got introduced my uh, my pastor at Saliami. They call them captains. Uh, she she introduced me to Babylon Five. Oh, sorry, we, someone else introduced uh, to me to Babylon Five. I think it was Kevin Luke, one of my good friends, um, and we'd just you know hang out and play. Um, Risk. Uh. All right, the classic Risk game. This is this is my um, my brother bought this for me a couple of years ago. I think it was 2018 or something like that, or 2017, because he knew I loved Risk so much. And so we used to play, uh, you know, um, play Risk. And I actually painted a table that my mum bought um, had bought for our store way back in the 80s uh when we used to own a um, dairy well not a dairy actually it was a restaurant uh, like a cafe in mordor and so kevin and, and um i can't remember another friend's uh, name but we used to just play risk and so he he they sort of we got introduced in, because i'm a huge star for a star trek fan as you know um but he introduced me to babylon 5 so i bought this from um whew, off trade me for eighty dollars, and um, and it had been sitting since two thousand and five, in a protected. It came in a you know your normal box, un unmade, and it was sitting in a box under my bed in the cupboards for six years until until. Uh, one of my friends, when we had the shop in 2015 and 14, uh, Eats Kennedy, right? Eats, uh, one of my really, really cool friends. I haven't talked to him for ages, but um, yeah, we're supposed to, you know, I talked to him about 2008, might, might, might have been the last time I talked to him. But um, yeah, I've talked to his brother, Luke, who do, they do the, um, the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! and... Um, D and D, Dungeons and Dragons in town. They're like amazing group of people there, right? You you gotta meet them, and also Mint. I call them Mint. So Eats, Luke, and um, also while I'm you know calling out names, uh, Sean. The four of them, 
are amazing, amazing guys to get in introduced to Yu-Gi-Oh! and D&D in town. And also there's, uh, I think, Flesh and, Flesh and Blood we're supposed to introduce. Uh, they were going to bring in to um, have their own little area. I'm so excited about for Plunge. Uh, you know, and so, yeah, so if you want to search those guys out, right, uh, I think it's RPG, casual RPG is their thing on Instagram, so you can contact them through that, or maybe even on Facebook, but yeah, so she basically had, like, a Voyager, um, and anyway, as well, she, because, uh, you know, Voyager's awesome, you know. so back to, um, Babylon 5, right, so each dead, basically each he said, my dad does models. And so I said, bro, 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 bro. I've had this sitting under my bed for so long and in the cupboard secure. And it, it was, it's got its normal box. And I, I don't think I'd ever opened it. And then it was in another box. That's how much I love this thing. And then, um, you know, and I wanted to protect it. No damage done ever. So, um, so I said to him, please, you know, uh, you know, can you ask the dad to come in and let me chat to him? So... His dad actually put this together for me. So I went out and spent another 40, 30, 40 bucks on paint and stuff. And his dad put this together for me. So, uh, yeah, it's just such a beautiful thing. I mean, look at this. He like, look at the details, like, on the paint job he did. So he glued it all together for me, did all the paint jobs and stuff, you know. And it's, it's got its own little stand. That's why it's got the little holes there, so it stands there. And, um, and it comes with a little tiny badge as well. I don't want to go into my cupboard because there's everything's very uh, into the cabinet there. The glass cabinets, everything's too close because I've, I've got too much stuff. Anyway, so um, yeah, so Babylon 5, I recommend it. And the other thing is that I went and bought all the books afterwards as well on how they made it, what was it pitched. So they pitched it to uh, Warner's. I oh, know, sorry, they pitched it to the Columbia. Anyway, one of the people that own Star Trek, um, the franchise, or the, they own all the license to the intellectual property there. Um, and they said, oh, yeah, we don't, we don't think a, sh uh, a ship stuck, you know, like a city, a ship the size of a city stuck in space is going to work for Star Trek. And the other thing is that uh, J. M. J. Michael Straczynski, he actually is a was a good friend of the late Gene Roddenberry, right? And um, so he said, you know, this would be really good. I think this is where, this would work really with the Star Trek universe. Gene, you know, we're, you know, me and him would chat about the stuff and this would be a really cool thing. And they said, no, 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 I don't think it'll work for us. And lo and behold, he gets turned down with the pitch. And he's got a five year, five year, 25 episode each kind of thing. You know, it's like a hundred episodes or something of this. Uh, so it's a good time to watch it. Uh, so, and they said, no, no, we don't want that. We don't think it's going to work for us. So they come up with DS9, which is another good show. And, and, um, and so they did DS9. I love DS9. DS9 is, I've watched it twice. Right. And, um, and it's just, it's a good show. And so, so, uh, so they turned him down at DS9. So he went to Warner's. And he pitched them, and they said, yeah, we'll do it. And so, then you have Babylon 5. Um, you know, a ship stuck in space, uh, can't be moved, um, and a planet on the, um, you know, an alien planet, and all these people, like, U United Nations in space, right? So, you got people who clean the floor, people in poverty who are hiding away, People, you know, cockroaches and, you know, the whole works. Just the entire city on a ship. And so I, you know, I, I used it to just prop myself up in my anxiety and all that and in my depression. And so then I, when I went to film school, you know, I came up with an idea. This is what I'm, it's a roundabout way of saying about writing and stuff. That when I was reading it, I actually met um, the gentleman who played Basta. Rico, can you search that up for me, brother? Um, I don't want to get into this PC too much, but um, on Babylon 5, he played Besta, but he was also Chekhov on Star Trek, the original Star Trek. And of course, he's been in a lot of other things, if I remember right. And, I'm, and I was able to, in 2007, ask him about the, 
the uh, yeah. So I, I started reading the novels. So this is a roundabout way. Sorry, guys. I have issues with my head trying to keep things in line. So. So. Yeah. So basically, um, Vesta was the leader of the Psychor. Psychors is a whole uh, idea from Philip K. Dick. Um, Blade Runner, if you can see that, classic old Blade Runner um, game. Woo. Right, so yeah, so this is a PC Blade Runner game from Virgin. And just, uh, West, Westwood, let me just pull that out. So P Philip K. Dick is another great writer, and he's one of my favorites as well. So, and um, it's still in the thing. Oh, my dad had this. Right, my dad just like used to collect games and stuff. He's a really cool. My dad's amazing. He's 80 years old. He'll be 81 this year. Sorry about the lighting there, but yeah. So this is Blade Runner, and um, and I was like, Dad, I want it. Don't, 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 you know, give it to me, give it to me. So I, I I took all those games basically, not because I want to play them, but because just you know it's there. And of course, as Rico knows, and everybody on um, the New Zealand comic books and um, collectors knows that in um, in December, I went home to help my dad clear out some, um, sh clear out his shed, clear out some his computer room and stuff. We had tons of stuff, magazines from the 80s and 90s. And my dad was just going to chuck them all away because, like, where do we put them? I said, Dad, hold on. And we did, uh, uh, you know, uh, there'll be people, you know, um, geeks and nerds out there who would be who would appreciate some of the stuff. And of course, we packed up. I got online for about 15, 20 minutes and live streamed it. I said, Hey. We're going to throw this all away. Guys, if you want this, let me know. And people started putting their hands up. And so I brought back about, whew, maybe about a dozen shopping bags of stuff. Of course, I kept the games because uh, not all of them. I just kept the ones with the, with the uh, demos, which had um, anime on it. Like the first episodes of anime. It was like, how'd this happen? Where these all come from? And of course, um, I don't know, but we gave some Rico, as he knows, we, uh, you know, some of them end up in, in the bags, with what, which I gave to Rico, with all the magazines, historic magazines. And he came back and said, bro, 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 this has got anime as well. Here, you've got to have this before, you know, before somebody else takes it. And I said, cool. But yeah, so, yeah, so Babylon 5, is, you know, inspired me to be, to write sci-fi. Before that, I was, um, you know, I'd already done a sci-fi stage production called life with a question mark and if you were back in 2000 and i think it was 2001 maybe 99 maybe yeah 2000 we did a stage play in new zealand and Whangarei, and you might have seen the life uh, yellow life uh, posters around um and yeah so we that was a, a um there was a sci-fi stage production, and I had some amazing people who helped me put that on together, but I didn't really know what, this is where I was going to be, right? Um, so this is why I like, I like experiencing lots of doing anything I get my hands into and experiencing that. Um, so so then, then when I went to, um, you know, I, I watched basically all of Star Trek, Voyager, learning how to be a good leader, uh, dealing with difficult times, uh, obstructions, whatever. Um, you know, things that come up against you and stuff, how to deal with it. Um, and so, yeah, there was a good learning that from, uh, you know, from Star Trek, um, for, you know, especially when it comes to you, you know, people talk about, uh, you know, all these things are always political. They, they can be political, but you don't have to push it and force it into people's faces like Picard is doing right now. I just won't watch Picard. I just will not, you know. Um, and it's because it's, there's, it's just such a horrid little thing. Sure, you know, it's like, oh, I don't know, I'm not going to go on that. Sorry, guys. But yeah, so uh, so Babylon 5 really talks about diplomacy and uh, and talks about dealing with different things. Like, I mean, it's got all these amazing, amazing uh, social uh, questions, uh, talking with how to deal with people, war, society, everything. And it's such a great series, and it's not, it's not flashy, right? It's not flashy like, the, um, like, um, you know, like Star Trek. It's not like flashy, flashy, flashy in the sense. And I don't, 
I love Star Trek in that sense that Voyage and all that was cool and all that place. But it's kind of like tones it right down and says this is what it would be like if we actually had a city on a ship. So yeah, so then I would, you know, when I went down to film school back in 2003, I had six months there before the school started in 2004. And so I went, I got online on Trade Me and buy as many Babylon 5 and Star Trek books as I could. So I, and also the toys, right? I've got a whole bunch of the, um, um, toys as well, figurines that I just haven't even pulled out yet. Rico hasn't even seen it, right? Uh, my co-host. And, um, and so I'd read all these books. And one of the ones that really inspired me to write uh, sci-fi, because I hadn't really looked into writing sci-fi. I had touched on it, but not really into completing it. So I started writing, uh, reading the best, um, the life of Besta or something. I can't remember what it's called, but of course, you know, I'll find it and I'll post it on here, like the, the um, yesterday with the links. Um, hopefully, I remember. And so he, it was just talking about how this character had become what he had become, and I was like, I can do this. I would love to do something like this. What you know? How would I go about doing it? And so I leaned on everything I had known and read and came up with Final Zenith, right? And Final Zenith is a, a huge three-year uh, was TV series. The pilot's done, the first 10 episodes are done. Ten episode, uh, by an episode, I mean 44 pages, right? 45 pages per episode. So there's about 450 pages of scripts it's done and then you've got the hour and a half movie so then we're going to turn that in instead of a movie into a comic book right and the the weird thing is that that i started there in 2003 guys but now that has part, become the part of the plunge burst that we're doing you know uh part of templeton right part of incredible you know on rises and comics and part of uh, um you know Red Dot, our vigilante. So you have, it's become the base of all of that. Of, you know, that, you know, Templeton is, part of the, is the supernatural sort of um, magic thing. Uh, Red Dot is part of the, part of the normal, everyday person. Uh, no powers, nothing. Uh, and then you've got Incredible, who's a superhero. We call our characters, our superpowered beings, in, our, you know, in the Plunge universe, Plungeverse. Uh, Superman, which is like a, uh, which is kind of like, um, which is the, the Romanian word for super Superman. Uh, so you know, I'll basically becomes the basis of the entire. Hey Anthony, Kira brother, thanks for coming in and joining us. Uh, so this final zenith becomes the key base of all this expansion of this ten year universe that we're gonna, or comics that we're gonna put out. So you have super. Like I said, superheroes, vigilantes, uh, normal people, all based in New Zealand, right? But it's a huge universe. So there's three planets. If you've, if you've read the um, Incredible, let me get my legs out. It's hurting a bit. Sorry, guys. Um, and, you know, uncork my legs. Uh, or unwind my legs. Uh, and, um, you know, the three universes. We call, call Maurice, Children, and Earth. The two, three planets. Um, so Maurice is like a, uh, kind of like, like Africa, like a really, not Africa, I wouldn't say that, but really, um, and not even backward, but really primitive culture, a planet that's primitive culture. And they have Maurice, which is totally advanced compared to us, but then we have Earth, normal, everyday Earth. And so, you know, um, that's the unit, that's the plant universe. And so, in that universe, I'm able to bring my 20 years of writing, almost 25 years of writing, into this one universe. And it's, it's been difficult and weird trying to tie it all into this one amazing universe that I've created and co-created. Like, Vigilant, uh, with uh, Red Dot, of course, co-created with um, Seven. This is his artwork. All right. And he's all like I said yesterday. He's working, um, or the other day, he's working on the one shot that we're doing. And then we're we're going to expand on that. And if you want, Red Dot 
the character as a New Zealand SAS officer. Now, the way we started this character based on an actual uh, dealing, myself dealing with the actual murder, that one of my uncles was murdered uh, the, about a year earlier. And I was trying to deal with the emotions of how to, you know, and, and the best way I find as an artist is to actually write about it as a writer, to write about it or draw something. I remember when my granddad died, uh, he, he was 60 years old or something, he got hit, you know, was on a, he was plowing the land, he was bring, I think he was bringing the, um, the bullocks home, because in Fiji, before, you know, we had, the richer people had tractors, us poor people had bullocks, right? So what happens is you have two bulls, and you put a yoke over them, which is they, you know, like you put over the neck, it's, I'll, I'll put it, put something up there to show you guys later on, and they basically walk hand in hand, and I mean side by side, and keep the yoke keeps them together. And so he got kicked in the heart, in the chest, and he had a heart attack at the age of sixty-five, remember? And he later in hospital passed away. And the way I dealt with it at the time, because I wasn't writing at the time, I was at art school right here in Northland, at Polytech. It was called Northland Polytech. Now it's called North Tech. And so I just painted a picture, like a, um, a, I think maybe about 30 centimeters wide. I don't even own it. I don't even know where the hell that is now. I don't know what happened to it. And, uh, you know, like about a meter and a half high and 30, 30 centimeters, 40 minutes, centimeters wide. And I just painted him walking to the gates of heaven. All right. Um, and that's how I dealt with it. So now I just write it down. And so when I was writing this down, I was... When the com it was like 2014 or 2015, I just said to um, would you want to do an art school, um, comic school, you know, at, at the shop, and just you know, and then um, Shane basically said, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll help you out, bro. I hadn't met Shane for years, right? He was at art school a year ahead of me, I think even two years ahead of me, at my project, and so he said, yeah, man, I love you know, it'd be cool to just do that, and so we started doing that, and then we created the um, red dot character out of that. You know, it was, just, it was going to be a story just like uh, Punisher dealing with this stuff. And then we said, you know, let's give him something else. And then uh, I think 2018, I, um, I got some money to enter competition in America. Um, um, and they wanted a 12-page script. So they wanted a 12-page short film script. And so I was like, what do I do? I had a topic about some mission or something like that. Uh, and they, they choose a topic for you. And so... I think it was New York, New York short film competition, something like that. You can check it out on, on Facebook, the Facebook page. And so I, I went and spent two hours watching a documentary, two, three hours watching a documentary online that um, New Zealand TVNZ had done about our SAS officers and the history of that and what they do and how they are peacekeepers in their environments, and how they back other people up. And so I wrote a 12-page story, uh, film script, 15, 14, and I had to cut it down. And they liked it, but they they wanted to know more, and, you know, it wasn't in somewhere there anyway, but it was cool. And then, then I thought, you know, I left it, and then... 2018 came around, and um, an itchy trigger finger was coming around, and I thought, you know what? I hadn't talked to Shane for about three years, because I went into a, almost a three-year depression. Uh, and just, yeah, I'd wake up. If I felt depressed, I'd take a pill. I don't do that anymore, because I've, I've found a way to do that through my art, through all you know, keep myself busy, so I don't need to do that anymore. But I, that's all I did for three years. And anytime I felt uh, sorry for myself, every time I felt angry at people, I'd just take a pill. Uh, and I, like I said, I don't do that anymore. And I don't recommend it because that's three years wasted of my life. Right? But then, uh, so I heard about your trigger finger, came around, and I said to, I uh, hit up Sh um, Shane, I said, bro, I'm doing this thing, uh, what are you, you know, would you be interested in, um, you know, how much of that work did you do? I said, oh, I did about five, six pages. I said, you know what? Why don't we, you know, why don't we release that as a free thing? 
because I'd just been um, gotten back with Rising Sun Comics because I'm an investor in the company uh, from way back, probably about a decade back or more. And I said, you know, what if we release this as a free download for people to see what we can do in New Zealand? And, you know, in Whangarei. Uh, and I love my city. Guys, I really do. And I don't just say it nonchalantly, but I do love my city. Because my city has helped me a lot. And the people in my city have helped me a lot to become the person I am today. So, yeah. So, I said, why don't we just do that? Why don't we base it here? Why don't we do this? And so we did. But now, it's gotten bigger. So... So we've created the Plunge Universe, it's got sci-fi, it's got uh, supernatural, it's got uh, angels, demons, it's got um, crime, it's got, uh, as I said, superhero power, uh, superpowers, it's got aliens, right? It's got um, politics, it's got all that. It's got everything. And 20 years of writing has now suddenly become this huge uh, universe of characters and powers and stuff. But I've got more other stuff, right, for other people who work on uh, outside of New Zealand uh, through Rising Sun Comics. Okay, that's enough of that. Right, so let me move this little beauty away, save it somewhere safe that doesn't get damaged. Because I just, ugh, it's precious. Okay, so if you want to get kids into comics uh, and they're younger, uh, young teen, uh, pre-teens, whatever, Oblix and Asterix are really cool. I picked, the, I got this, um, I, I had uh, Tama buy this for me when he, from a toy fair recently. Uh, this I picked up for about 50 cents, guys. Or a dollar, I think. I think um, me and Jess were around. We always hunt for stuff like this. And, you know, we go out and buy stuff like this. Stuff that's hanging out, you know, for cheap and stuff. That people are giving away. I mean, not giving away, but putting out there for free, uh, you know, for cheap. And... Because stuff like this, seeing things that works for me as a creator, because it helps me when I'm, in, you know, just to see colorful things in the house and things that I love growing up. And I, Asterix and Obelix were really cool when I was at Mortimer Primary School, when I was about eight, nine, ten, and stuff like that, eight. eight. Uh, of course, uh, 2000 AD, you know, like I mentioned, Regan before, right? You know, he got me into this, right? I really didn't, as a, as, a, as a little child, I really didn't understand it in pretense, but it stuck with me. And then when I was able to spend my own, uh, earn my own money going to work as a 16, 17 year old in, in Auckland, uh, you know, and, and I'd go and spend my money on comics and music. So, uh, you know, one of the great writers in comic books is John Byrne, right? If you want, if you want good 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 stories artwork i think uh let me see did he write this as well yeah he's a yeah he did the artwork on this as well penciler and writer right so he mainly does pencils so um the the um, the chris claremont and the john ben era of this of uh, x-men are the best comics you can Read. Someone mentioned on, on uh, I don't know who it was today on um, News on Comic Books and Collectors uh, um, group page about the Phoenix Saga. I think it was the Phoenix Saga, which they worked on. And, and he said it hasn't aged. He said I've read it again after a long time. It hasn't aged. And the movie didn't do it justice, but the movie movie was okay. But if you if you really want something to really bite your teeth on and you love the X-Men like I do, read the, um, the um, John Byrne and Chris Claremont era. That's the one that really got me into um, Marvel, to be honest. I'm not buying any more Marvel stuff because I, I can always buy the older stuff that are really awesome and I will always love that stuff. Okay, so he, did, he worked on this um, The Man of Steel comic book. Um, Way back in when was this? Uh, here we go. Let me find out. And guess what? <laughs> I, uh, this is a second-hand book, by the way. I picked it up somewhere. And, I, you know, I don't worry about ex-library books and stuff. I just love them. So this was um, 1986. And uh, this, one's been, um, this was printed in uh, 1993. 
as a graphic novel. Okay. Next up is, of course, let's talk about The League of Gentlemen. The League of Gentlemen is a really cool uh, comic book series, right? Uh, Alan Moore and Kevin O'Neill. It's got so much. And if you've seen the movie, right, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty good movie. I actually quite enjoyed it. I actually like the way it was done and stuff. And, uh, but of course, a lot of times, some of the things, that, um, and a majority of the times, the work that, um, as you can see back there, is um, Alan Moore's Watchman. A majority of the time, uh, a lot of his work doesn't transpire well to movies or other mediums because he's a real, real deep thinker when it comes to comic books. And he's a real great inspiration to me as a comic book writer to really, really think about the concept of uh, of um, and the art form of what comic books really is. That's why he's such 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 a great uh, inspiration to majority, if not ninety nine percent of the comic book creators out there. That you know, that Alan Moore, right? If you read the Legal Agents, you will find that there's so much to it. There's such amazing detail, right? And there's just so many amazing you know there's just sometimes because i'm a, I'm a writer i go well why isn't there words and stuff there's many small words but he's he's all about details and why something's where it is this invisible man right and and then he'll go into like in this one here right if i remember right he'll go into huge huge you know narrations and stories about why he does um why what it is the backgrounds of characters and this one here is actually a short story, if I remember right. Look at the amazing work that Kevin O'Neill's done, right? The details. So, uh, of course, uh, in the Black Dossier, you had the um, 3D glasses, right? And um, yeah, so if you've got, if you've got something, um, cheers, um, cheers, Regan. I'll catch you later, bro. Look after the family. You too. Stay safe, bros. Okay, so yeah, so, yeah, Sean Connery, this is such a, you know, let me see who else is in this. It's been a while since I've watched that, and I might have to go, go back and watch it. So, D Director of Blade. Here's a weird thing. When the Black Panther came out, everybody was like, he's the first super comic book black superhero. Really? Let me see that. Where, 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 oh, nope. Oh, it's not coming up. No, it's not coming up. Sorry, my bad. But it says the director of Blade, right? So when... All right, so you know it's going to be... It's good. Uh, but yeah, got nothing to watch right now. Get up. Get um, get around and find um, found you a copy of um, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. But yeah, so Alan Moore... This is the thing. So sometimes when it comes to... Well, I saw with mentorships earlier. That you don't have to know people physically or have talked to them to be inspired by them. And I just think, you know, Alan, Alan Moore is one of the greatest living legends we have right now in comics. And I think the way he's been treated is rubbish and crap. And so I will always back up what he says because I just, you know, he's just a great man. Okay. Now, the next thing, if you're interested, you know, if you want something else to watch right now, kick, kick ass. I got my little uh, bobblehead um, uh, head girl, and everybody talks about strong female characters as well, right? So, nope, I'm gonna leave that in there. I'm gonna fight with the box. Uh, Kickass, um, right? Um, amazing story. Uh, just, you know, just uh, Mark Mark Miller, Miller, with an A. Miller, Mark Miller, right, and the surname, um, and um, yeah, it's such a real, real world, you know, people talk about, oh, we've got to base it in reality and stuff, well, Kick-Ass is based in reality, right, uh, but a lot of times fantasy is therefore as an escape, so I think this is a time, you know, we need to have a bit of escapism, and have a bit of time to just be, you know, away from our stresses and stuff. Um, let's see. Oh, let me get back to, um, 
J. Michael Straczynski. One of the, yeah, one of the other things that got me thinking about superheroes was J. Michael Straczynski's um, Rising Stars series that he did for Image Comics. I paid about 60 bucks for this back in the day when I could afford it, when I was working two jobs and studying at film school. Right? Two part-time jobs and studying at film school. So, yeah. Um, so, this is basically, if you watch my live stream, is based on uh, what I think um, and I know that uh, the Heroes was taken off from. Right? Rising Stars. But he also did a series which is really, really good. Uh, was um, Supreme Squadron was a uh, was a comic book in the ninth eighties uh, eighty six I think it was eighty seven uh, which was kind of like Marvel's um, version of Justice League and and they were like really really good it's a and that's another thing if you can find it I think I've got the whole a graphic novel somewhere and. Yeah, I think of the graphic novel somewhere. And so in the in two three uh JMS JMS J. Michael Strunsky was working for Marvel Comics um before he left them because over um the destruction of Peter Parker and um Mary Jane Smith's marriage, which is one known as uh Brave uh I think it was One More Day and Brave New Day or something like that. Brand New Day, Brand New Day. And he hated what Crusader had done to his, his like, does, uh, like his years of writing. Um, James had been writing uh, Amazing Spider-Man and I'd been really into it and I'd been collecting it. I was back, uh, collecting back orders, paying extra to get the back orders. And, uh, and yeah, so he had a dispute over, you know, ruining their marriage. And so that's why you... There was this whole dispute, and he left and went and worked for quite a few years at um, DC Comics on uh, Wonder Woman and also on S Superman. And so, anyway, so he did uh, he re uh, re um, revamped the Squadron Supreme into Supreme Power. That really got me thinking about superheroes, and you know, I, I back issued that, collected all that, and it's a good series to read as well. Uh, so, based on so, it's like a it's it's very different, um, and add a mature take on superheroes, and it's a really cool story to read. And I think if you, if you, you guys will enjoy it, Supreme Power is, is the name of it. Uh, of course, the other one was called Supreme Squadron, the 80s one. So in 20 years, odd years later, he revamped it as um, Supreme Power. And I was really into it. Um, even just did a poster of what I would, you know, for, as a movie poster for a project at film school of who I'd want in that, um, in that, um, in the film make of it. So yeah, so that's all I got for you today, guys. Thank you for joining me in joining me joining me stay safe out there kakite ano thank you guys for hanging out um doing this is just putting a smile on my face as you can see enjoying talking about comics enjoy talking about what i love um trying to put a little bit of um positivity out there uh some words of wisdom that other people have given you know over the years have given me this too will pass we will get through this it might be hard afterwards with um, financial and stuff, but we will get through this. We're Kiwis. We've gone through many more stuff, and so has the world, and we'll get through this. Stay safe. Stay home. Only get our iPhone essentials. And don't be a dick. Okay? Think about everybody else while you think about yourself. So don't go around and around doing silly things right now. I noticed that there was a fire... Like somebody had lit a fire down in Napier somewhere. And at a school, a 50-year-old girl got arrested for lighting fire at a school. Um, there was 2 o'clock in the morning. There was like um, police up the road from us. All right, I just got told by my neighbor that 2 o'clock there's tons of police out, 10 cars or so. Don't, don't use this time to create more problems for our, uh, for our medical staff. And a shout-out. To our amazing frontline people, and I've said it from the start. But those guys are under a lot of stress. Don't give them more, 
more stuff to do, like Bugsy Malone, right? The rapper in the UK, grime rapper, crashed his trike into another car. He T-boned a car yesterday. Don't be a dick out there, guys. Love each other, treat each other well, take care of your family, take care of each other. Kakite Ano from Whangarei, New Zealand. Give each other an air hug, you know. Salute to you all, frontliners. Thank you for your hard work. Kakite Ano.